Hello and welcome back to Tech Days Online. My name's Paul Foster. I'm a technical evangelist with Microsoft. And I'm here to tell you about the Nano Satellite Project that we are working with the Space Applications Catapult on. So right back at the beginning, last September, I had the opportunity for a really geeky weekend. I went to Harwell Research Park where the Space Applications Catapult is set up. And together with my eldest son, Scott, we assembled a nano satellite. This was a satellite built from the kit that the Space Applications Catapult had designed, all from flight-tested parts. Um, it's quite incredible, you know, we tend to think of satellites the size of Ford Transit vans, um, but actually they've been getting smaller and smaller as electronics and technology evolves. And in recent years, we've seen devices as small as 10 centimeters cubed. These are CubeSats, and today you you can build a CubeSat as a one unit 10 centimeter cube or some multiple of it. So you can have a three unit CubeSat which is 10 by 10 by 30 for example. Um, but the next iteration is bringing that even smaller. Obviously the smaller the device the easier it is to get off the earth, the cheaper it is to, to uh, get into space. And, uh, of course, it still needs to be able to do something useful. Um, but the next iteration is this thing called the Pocket Cube Sat, which is literally just five centimeters cubed. And we actually have had real Pocket Cubes floating around the Earth in orbit for a period of days, um, put into space or manufactured, I should say, for very low budget, you know, literally tens of dollars in one particular budget example. So I attended this uh, weekend, we had a great time, we assembled the kit, we managed to test it tethered to a helium balloon uh, and we built a ground station that enabled us to actually communicate with the satellite and take off the sensor data uh, that we had uh, were deploying from the satellites. We'd add in a number of different sensors, pretty generic stuff of temperature and light and things like that. Um, and then the opportunity and discussion afterwards came up and it was like, okay, the satellite apps people, how could we take this further? How could we actually inspire young people to get involved in technology using this sort of approach? Because, you know, technology has never been more accessible, but the idea of space being accessible is something that does excite everybody and of course this year with Tim Peake on the ISS you know space is a, a, you know a key theme so the key thing for us at Microsoft is our collaboration with the BBC and partners on the microbit and the microbit you know gives us a small computing device that is going to be deployed to over a million school children in the UK it's a, a Cortex M0 processor, it's a 16 megahertz, it's running with only 16K, but it's got all of those GPIO, those general purpose IO pins that we want to have to be able to play and extend our micro bit. So we can get to, you know, the I squared C electronics bus, the SPI bus, we've got serial out of the USB. Um, and then we've got some sensors actually on this device as well. So we've got, you know, the um, magnometer at, that gives us an electronic compass. And we've actually got a accelerometer as well as a light indicator, a very simple light indicator. And we can do some, some funny stuff to be able to calculate temperature from uh, the magnometer as well. Um, and then we've got some buttons and we've got uh, a 5x5 five five LED array um, on the side of the micro bit, which enables us to get some output uh, and collect some inputs. So it's quite a powerful device. It has BLE built in as well. Um, so we've got every element. So the key thing with the nano satellite project was that we wanted the hardware to be have a direct correlation to systems on a satellite. So, you know, we've got our radio antenna and our radio. We've got our power management system that can work from batteries or from solar. Um, we've got our, our processor. We've got our various sensors. Um, but we actually wanted some more things to um, create a more creative environment in which we could use um, this uh, kit, this solution to inspire young people in technology and science. So we wanted to have this cross-curriculum activity where to achieve maybe a science experiment um, they needed to do a bit of you know, technology programming or electronics assembly. So working with the Space Applications Catapult um, I did a number of things. I've been building a number of uh, pieces around the uh, micro bit already. Um, but what you see there in uh, my top right is actually my prototype nano satellite. So this was a, a five by five by six centimeter mock-up using breakout balls and a breadboard. It, the six centimeters was because the micro bit is five centimeters and it needed an edge connector, it was a little bit bigger. 
Um, but the key point is that we proved that we could get all the sort of interesting pieces of circuitry to work with the micro bit. And so then it was a case of actually bringing that together and uh, manufacturing something that we could deploy as a kit. So that brings us to you know, the Satellite Inventors Kit, which is kind of the working name for this project. Um, so really what we've done is we've taken all the fun things, the camera, a more accurate temperature sensor, a, a more specialist um, light sensor that can give us UV, IR and luminance um, data. We've added an SD card, a micro SD card reader. Um, so we can basically add all of this via the edge connector to a micro bit and now we have a data logger. You know, a data logger that can be set up for time-lapse experiments, uh, can be used in a wide variety of different ways to explore different aspects of science, you know, light waves, um, for example, or um, actually taking the data and actually performing some further functions upon it. Uh, I'll show you a bit about that in a moment. But there's a lot of things we can do. You know, the camera has some great functionality. It provides a JPEG image straight off the camera, so we can put that straight onto SD storage or transmit it over the radio. Um, but it also has motion detection across frames, so we can use that as a trigger activity. Um, so, you know, it's quite a powerful little data logger and we're building out now a, a sort of collection of content um, that we can use. So if I were actually to just show you one of the, the actual manufactured devices just here, um, you can actually see a device for real. Um, and, and it's incredible, even with only 16K, you know, 16K is a whole new challenge again, haven't been there uh, since my youth. Um, but we can build quite a lot of fun things, uh, including some image processing stuff, which I won't tell you any more about, but uh, you have to look out for that in the near future because it's uh, you know, a, a very powerful little box. But I mean, you know, tier one data coming off the sensors isn't terribly interesting or doesn't really enable you know, a young person to get to grips with some of the bigger themes of science. So we're looking to provide what we're calling a mission control application, which is a Xamarin app. Um, built by um, community members, um, led by Gary Whitaker. Um, so we're actually collating a cross-platform app which will enable um, students not just to um, program the satellite kit with um, Touch Develop or any of the other supported microbit languages, um, but will actually provide a curated experience of experiments and content that they can drive from their mobile phone and then program up the um, satellite kit to perform tasks for them. So particular experiments can be uh, directly performed. Um, what I'm showing on my screen at the moment is this fantastically named Normalized Difference Vegetation Index. Um, this is a, an index of plant health that is exhibited in the IR spectrum, in the infrared spectrum of light. Um, and the NOAA satellites and Landsat 8 and uh, the latest Sentinel satellites are all using this to plot Earth's vegetation, where vegetation changes across years, and the, and the health of vegetation. And certainly this technology is also used in agrotech scenarios where we can determine the health of crops um, because plants actually exhibit their health up to seven days earlier in the infrared spectrum than in the visible light spectrum. So if you're a farmer and you get this early warning system, you can actually say, my plants are in trouble, and I need to be able to apply the, the appropriate fertilizer or pesticide. Um, and you know, if you do that in the right time, of course, you will never actually see your crop fail because you had that early warning system. So that's a powerful capability of satellites that we wanted to bring home to young people to inspire them. So it's one of the experiments that you can do. And here you have a picture looking out over my garden uh, with a pot plant in the front. Uh, and that's on, the, on my left. And on the right, you have this NDVI processed image. So basically, this is a colorization of the image that highlights the wavelength of infrared light being projected by growing things to show an indication of growth. Um, this was one of my first attempts. So there's still tuning and things that I can do to improve it. But I wanted to show you because it just uh, shows that from this very simple device, you know, it's just a little 16K device connected with our mission control app. You know, we're actually able to deliver a powerful experiment. Um, and it doesn't just end there with the mission control app. We have this grand vision of being able to use the mission control app as a field gateway. So if you're looking at IoT and you're familiar with IoT, you'll recognize what I'm talking about now. We've now got our sensor device 
communicating to a field gateway that now has the internet connectivity to take it to the cloud. So we have a, a plan for a national project um, that we hope will incorporate many schools around the UK and will have the ability to aggregate that data up and display it, visualise it via the cloud with the help of the Azure user group and the IoT innovators user groups. Now, we are collaborating really strongly with the Azure user group. Um, they have an event running with Scott Guthrie across the 3rd and 4th of June called Azure Craft. I do recommend you check that out and have a look. On the first day in London, uh, we have Scott Gu giving us a presentation and many community members actually presenting um, tech talks on a whole range of cloud oriented technologies. Uh, we'll also have a first run workshop to let you get hands on um, with the nano satellite kit and explore what you could do with this data logger. And then on the second day, we had this technology festival, this tech fest of activity for developers and technical families, for young people that want to get involved in technology. It's a whole series of fun workshops that actually take you through um, getting to use the micro bit for the first time, getting to program the nano satellite kit and utilizing that in a science experiment, uh, to other more traditional IoT projects around Windows IoT Core and cloud services for consuming those IoT uh, outputs and visualizing them and processing the data stream as it comes out. So there's a whole series of activity there, including a community showcase with some more talks um, about various OSS or cross-platform application development. Um, but we also got some fun things. The space race means you've got to get your satellite kit built and you've got to get it launched and you've got to get a photo and you've got to retrieve the photo. All of that is bound to deliver a very fun and active day. Uh, not forgetting, of course, that Azure Craft is also about uh, helping you get Minecraft running up and safely in the Azure world. So one of the things we really need, uh, and I appeal to you all, is that we need technical community people um, like me, advocates that are prepared to stand up, go to schools, help run these sorts of uh, activity workshops with the schools, support all of these projects, both in data visualization or contributing to the Mission Control app and the different applications we're planning to build uh, to support classroom-wide activities uh, based on the Raspberry Pi and Windows IoT core. Um, there's a wealth of different things that you could contribute to. Um, so do look at the Azure Craft um, site uh, and enroll uh, and give us an indication of whether you'd like to uh, proctor and support some of those workshops. Um, you can actually go to http colon forward slash slash microbit.co.uk uh, to actually play with um, the microbit development environments. That includes a microbit simulator. So you can actually go out there and do some programs and see the results. And it's a bit like the Windows Phone simulator. So you can grab hold of the microbit and virtually shake it to get accelerometer data and to change lighting conditions and press buttons and join circuits. So there's a lot of fun activities that you can bring. Now, as we move forward developing this, we really want to have that sort of uh, army of STEM ambassadors and uh, technology advocates to support schools. And to that end, you know, we're collating things like this. This is a case of 50 micro bits and accessories. That's all you need, plus yourself, uh, to go into a school and actually run a full interactive workshop to get children inspired. I mean, from the space applications catapult perspective, they're trying to make the UK space industry a 40 billion pound industry by 2030. 2030 just says to me that all the engineers and the scientists at that time are in school now. So this is a fantastic project, not just to get children inspired into a technical education and a technical career, but it's also an opportunity for you to explore new places and develop new skills from IoT all the way around to uh, cloud connectivity and presenting and visualizing data. So do join us on June the 4th or June the 3rd, if you can make that as well. June the 4th is at Thames Valley Park. We have the run of the ground floor of Thames Valley Park with all those activities spread around. It's going to be a great fun time. Uh, and I hope that you'll come along, maybe with your children, or just to support the activities or just to learn. But I hope to see you there. smaller the device, the easier it is to get off the earth, the cheaper it is to, to uh, get into space. And uh, 
of course, it still needs to be able to do something useful. Um, but the next iteration is this thing called the pocket cube sat, which is literally just five centimeters cubed. And we actually have had real pocket cubes floating around the Earth in orbit for a period of days. Um, putting tronics and technology evolves. And in recent years, we've seen devices as small as 10 centimeters cubed. These are CubeSats. And today, you can build a CubeSat as a one unit 10 centimeter cube or some multiple of it. So you can have a three unit CubeSat, which is 10 by 10 by 30, for example. Um, but the next iteration is bringing that even smaller. Obviously, the sm Hello and welcome back to Tech Days Online. My name's Paul Foster. I'm a technical evangelist with Microsoft. And I'm here to tell you about the nano satellite project that we are working with the Space Applications Catapult on. So right back at the beginning, last September, I had the opportunity for a really geeky weekend. I went to Harwell Research Park where the Space Applications Catapult is set up. And together with my eldest son, Scott, we assembled a nano satellite. This was a satellite built from the kit that the Space Applications Catapult had designed, all from flight tested parts. And it's quite incredible, you know, we tend to think of satellites the size of Ford transit vans, um, but actually they've been getting smaller and smaller as electro space, or manufactured, I should say, for very low budget, you know, literally tens of dollars in one particular budget example. So I attended this uh, weekend, we had a great time, we assembled the kit, we managed to test it tethered to a helium balloon, uh, and we built a ground station that enabled us to actually communicate with the satellite and take